So now that we know how to convert grams into moles and we can find moles of different elements, we're going to use that and our ability to calculate the molar mass to determine chemical formulas of different compounds. But first we need to define what a chemical formula is. Just saying a chemical formula is a generic way to say a set of chemical symbols showing the elements in a compound and their relative proportions. So it's all how they relate to each other. Do you have two carbons and six hydrogens, or do you have one carbon and two oxygens? Those symbols tell us what elements are there. The numbers tell us how many there are. Now, we have two types of chemical formulas. We have what's called an empirical formula, which is the most reduced down formula for a compound. And so an empirical formula is just a formula giving the proportions of the elements, not the actual numbers. So you ha could have an empirical formula of CH, but in actuality you have C6H6. So you have six carbons, six hydrogens, but reduce that down to their most basic proportions, and they're in a one-to-one -one ratio. So the empirical formula would simply be CH. The actual numbers is what makes up the molecular formula. So the molecular formula is the formula giving the actual amounts of the atoms of each type of element present in one unit of a compound. So what do you actually have? The empirical formula is the most reduced down, just showing the proportions. The molecular formula is showing both the proportions and the actual number of the atoms of each element. So we're going to start with how to find empirical formulas. So I tend to abbreviate empirical formulas EF. The first thing you need to do is you need to convert each type of element in the question. So your question will give you, you have so much carbon, so much hydrogen, et cetera, et cetera. You have so much of each type of element present. You need to convert those from grams into moles if they're not already in moles. Then you take the mole ratio and you're going to use the smallest number of moles. So when you do grams to moles, you'll end up with 0.2 moles, 0.5 moles, 2 moles, you're going to take your smallest number, put that one on the bottom, and find your mole ratio of each of the individual elements. Then you're going to round those ratios if you need to to make sure that they're whole numbers. Our law of multiple proportions says that when our elements combine to form compounds, they combine in whole number ratios. So we have to make sure that they're whole numbers. And then finally, we're going to take those ratios to write the formula. So let's walk through this step by step to see how one of these problems actually works. So in this problem it says that we have a compound made up of sulfur and oxygen and you have 50.05 grams of sulfur and 49.95 grams of oxygen and what's the empirical formula? So step one tells us we have to take each of these numbers and convert them into moles. So we're going to do sulfur first and so we have 50 0.05 grams of sulfur. This is just a simple grams to mole conversion, so I'm going to put my grams on the bottom and my moles on the top. Grams and moles should tell you molar mass. Since it's just sulfur, we're looking on the periodic table, and sulfur is 32.006. Oops, 066. Nope, yeah, that's right. And then one mole. So now if I divide, my cheat sheet tells me that that is 1.56 moles of sulfur. Now it's really important that you label what you're calculating. If you don't remind yourself that this is sulfur that you're doing, you're going to come back and go, wait, what number did I just calculate? So it's really important to make sure that you're organized when you're working through these problems and making sure that you label your steps as you go. So now we've done sulfur, so now we're going to do oxygen. So we have 49.95 grams of oxygen, grams on the bottom, moles on the top. I need my molar mass, so in one mole we have 15.999 grams of oxygen. Again, that comes from the periodic table. Once you divide, you get that you have 3.12 moles of oxygen. I want to pause here and point out something. If we just looked at our masses, we'd say that that is roughly in a one-to-one -one ratio. Both are approximately 50 grams. But remember, we can't compare masses of different elements because the different individual atoms of different elements have different masses. 
So if we're looking at the total number of atoms present in a compound, we have to convert to moles to look at numbers. So this tells us, really, that we have a lot more oxygen than we have sulfur in this compound. So now we're going to find the mole ratio. And I said that you're going to do this with the smallest number. So we're going to do everything compared to sulfur because we have the least number of moles of sulfur. So if I find my ratio of sulfur to sulfur, 1.56 to 1.56 gives me one. I do that really just to remind myself of which one I'm comparing it to. And then I'm going to do oxygen to sulfur, which gets me 3.12 divided by 1.56, which gets me 2. So the ratio of oxygen to sulfur is 2 to 1. We have two oxygens to every one sulfur. Step 3 tells us to round to whole numbers. We don't have to do step 3 because they're already in whole numbers. And then 4 just tells us to simply write the formula. So we have one sulfur and we have two oxygens. So our empirical formula is SO2 because our ratio of oxygen to sulfur is two oxygens to every one sulfur. So that's how we find empirical formulas. Now let's look at how we find molecular formulas. In molecular formulas, I abbreviate appropriately MF. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to find your empirical formula. So you're going to work through the steps that we just did to find the empirical formula for the compound. Next, you're going to calculate that empirical formula mass. So essentially the molar mass based on that empirical formula. Then you're going to compare that to the molecular mass. So you're going to divide the molecular mass by the empirical formula mass. You'll figure out that the molecular mass is three times, four times, two times. It's going to be some factor greater than your empirical formula mass. You're then going to use that factor to scale your formula. So you're either going to multiply your whole formula by 2, by 3, by 4, whatever this number turns out to be. Because that'll tell you it's twice as much, it's twice as massive, it's three times as massive. That'll tell you there's two or three times each of the different elements. So we're going to use our same compound because we've already found its empirical formula. So we can skip that step. So this question says the mo molecular mass of the previous sulfur oxygen compound is 128.14 grams per mole. So that's its molecular mass, or its molar mass. Find the molecular formula. So our first step for finding a molecular formula is to find our empirical formula, and we did that already. So we know that our empirical formula is SO2. The next thing that we need to do is we need to find our empirical formula mass, which is really just adding up the numbers from here. So we know that sulfur is 32.066, and then we have two oxygens, each are 15.999, and we get an empirical formula mass of 64.07 grams per mole. So if this was our actual molecular formula, this would be our molar mass. That would be the mass of that particular compound. But we need to compare it to what the mass is of our actual compound. So we take our molecular mass divided by our empirical formula mass. So we do 128.14 grams per mole divided by 64.07 grams per mole. So that's this number given in the problem divided by this number here. When you divide that out, you get 2. So this tells me that our, impure, or our molecular formula, our actual compound, is exactly twice as massive as our empirical formula. So we're going to use this 2, and we're going to essentially multiply that by the, or by the empirical formula, because it's twice as massive. So if we distribute our 2 through each of these, that means we have two sulfurs, because we have one right now, so if we have twice as much, we have two sulfurs. And we started with two oxygens. If we know we really have twice as much, we have four oxygens. And so that gives us our molecular formula, something that's twice as massive as our empirical formula. We could reduce this down because we know that two to four is really a one to two ratio. So our molecular formula reduces to our empirical formula.